Good morning, friends. I welcome you all for this Sunday Evolution service. Oh, come. Let us worship our God, who is the creator of all and who cares for each and every one of us. Let us worship our beloved Jesus Christ, who runs towards the vulnerable and weak, who is ever ready to comfort the wounded. Let us worship them, filled with Holy Spirit, who empowers us. For the glory of God, let us sing opening song, Mata Rasharanam Sharanam Hidale. Gospel according to 
Mark chapter 7 verses 9 to 13. Mark chapter 7 verses 9 to 13. Then he said to them, You have a fine way to reflecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had from me is Kurban. That is an offering to God. Then we no longer permit doing anything for a father or mother, thus making right the word of God through your tradition that we have handed on. And you do many things like this. Here is the reading. Let us all stand and perform our faith. I believe in God the Parent, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, come to share divine love, but not receive good love, suffered as a Pontius Pilate, and not by our actions, not carrying our elders, but crucified, died and buried, he ascended into the hell, on the third day Jesus rose again to the dead for us, ascended into the heaven in order to intercede for the honorable and weak, and seated at the right hand of God, the current Almighty. From there Jesus will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit who corrects our wrongdoings, the Holy Christian Church which empowers us with the living word, the communion of saints who live a great life, the forgiveness of sins, the salvation of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Greetings to you all. In the name of our parents. During summer holidays, my mother's friends visited our home and stayed with us for a long time. They spent for many hours to discussion to build a home for retired employees who were forsaken by their children. After the discussion, I had a conversation with one of them whom I know from my childhood. I asked her, what is the purpose of building a home and why do they are needed it? She with tears responded in saying that today we became useless for our children. They don't want us anymore. They don't want us to stay with them. They are treating us as a barrier to their happiness and an obstacle for their joyous life. I asked her why do they feel like that. She said generation gap. And the conversation continued more than an hour. While concluded, she said, in every age, there will be a generation gap between our times and your times. But there are things that never change in any generation, that is, parents' love towards children. She continued to say, at the time of giving birth, we lay our life to provide life to the child. When children are growing, we lay our future to set future for the children. Now when they become mature, we hand over the responsibilities to hold a family. And then we live with the hope that until our death, we stay with our children because we are parents. We have no other hope than this and this earth. And hope our children would realize this, hope they understood that we do not need the pockets full of money, but heart full of love to be with them. That's the happiness and honor we expect from our children. But nowadays it is missing. Children are busy with their own lives and not caring for us. That is why we wanted to build a home for elderly. Those words have troubled my heart and made great, great impact on me to think about the situation of parents in the 21st century. 
Are we are a postmodern generation failing in order, failing in our duty to take care of the elders is our, is in our family? Should we see the increasing number of old age homes as a problem or should we consider it something necessary in our times? How should we understand carrying elders? In this text, I have chosen a text from Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 9 to 13 for today's meditation. In this pericope, Jesus provides an example of how the religious people of his time showed obedience to a rabbinic tradition which ends up only in breaking God's commandment. He comforts them by challenging their manipulative attitude of creating traditions that serve as a loophole in following God's commandments. In verse 9, Jesus expresses that a narrow and legalistic devotion to the religion and its tradition is a very convenient way of justifying oneself's behavior. Often human beings create traditions in the name of religion and its legalistic observance. Forget to recognize the essence of God and God's commandment. Such narrowness and blind faith have a hardening effect on character. They result in destroying the true nature of the spirit such as kindness, mercy, tolerance and love. We see Jesus explain this in the story of Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10 verses 32 37 that the religious preoccupation of the priest and Levite in the parable has blinded them to see the dire need of the strike man on the Jericho Road. Even today, this is reality in our society. Often we misunderstand and misinterpret scriptures to make excuses that suit our selfish needs and grief. We live in a world that celebrates individual successes, profit and competition. We are forced to think everything in these terms. Even our faith is corrupted by these values. Even we build our relationship for the sake of money, profit and career. We give importance. We are willing to sacrifice relationship for selfish greed. In such a context, it is important to understand our duty and the importance to take care of care for the elderly. Even as a theological community, we should be able to help faith community to be sensitive to the needs of the elderly people, to respect them and to care for them. I would like to reflect on the caring for elders from the red passage. Firstly, I would like to reflect on understanding caring the elderly as a commandment. Understanding caring the elderly as a commandment. In the Bible, we see God is God who cares. Especially, we see God cares for people who are vulnerable, dependent and weak. We see the hospital books again and again emphasize that having access for those who are in need, those who cannot voice for themselves, those who have no one to take care of. In ancient Israel, older people were respect and were given central place in the family and the family structure. We see several, several verses in Proverbs that talks about the fearing, harming and obeying parents, even when they are old. We will all know that fifth commandment demands that everyone honor their parents. This command to to honor includes taking care of the elderly people in the house, neglecting elderly carers before us. We see the event of Jesus commanding the attitude of Pharisees coming just after the passage where Pharisees question Jesus' disciples not washing hands than before eating. Jesus here points out that hypocritical attitude the Jewish leaders were following a tradition that created a loophole allowing them not to follow the fifth commandment. They followed the tradition where the children can dedicate the money to God, which is meant for parents as for God. 
And when they say we have no responsibility to take care of you. Korban is the Hebrew word translated in Greek text as work. That means sacrifice or gift to God. Sometimes scholars translated Korban as offer, come or draw near to God. But from the text it is understood that people use Korban as an excuse to avoid their responsibilities. The religious leaders during the time of Jesus interpreted do this because they saw taking care of parents as a burden, used the name of God and tradition for fulfilling their selfish needs. This is what Jesus called as hypocrisy. They want to show that they are very religious and they follow everything without faith, but then they have bad intentions. Many justifications for not being able to take care of their parents in their old age, their job, career, children's education, and so many other things. But still, we want to show everyone that we are for parents and elders. We call ourselves Christians. We believe in the word of God. But still, we forget the sacrifice that our parents and elders made for us and for our growth. We believe in such a way with them that they feel that they are a burden and have more value and respect. Sometimes we prefer to send them to old age home by spending some money and saying still care for them. But the truth is we neglect their emotions, their needs and their desires. This attitude is condemned as hypocrisy. Thirdly, it is important that we understand elderly care as a ministerial call to reflect God's love. Elderly care as a ministerial call to reflect God. God's love. Through the passage is a critic of the wrong attitude and intention of Pharisee. It can also be seen as a critic of how the care for elderly is conveniently neglected in the Jewish community using the name of Christian. Jesus calls us to understand the essence of God's commandment. When we neglect to care for the elderly, as Jesus said, we are making white the word of God. As followers of Christ, we are called to reflect God's love. Even in the cross, we see Jesus remembering the need of his mother to be carried. Often, Jesus' relationship with the family and especially mother is negatively interpreted by citing the marriage at Kana at the incident where family such him. In the Gospels, we have only a few incidents that reveal Jesus honoring his mother Mary. Those incidents were at the age of 12 near the temple and then at the marriage feast of Kana and her presence near the cross and Calvary. And there, are, there is another incident recorded by the apostles Mark and Matthew that her presence is present along with the family and who were seeking him. However, it is important that we understand the context and the situation of the events and the purpose with which it is written. Jesus' love for his earthly mother can be seen clearly on the cross. He was able to realize his responsibility even as he is breathing his last breath. Our faith calls to, our faith calls us to bear one another burden and not to see others as burden. I know a Christian family where after the retirement of their parents, the son and daughter demand their parents to settle their money and promise them to take care. Trusting their words, the parents did all the things and both the son and daughter got a big amount but within a year both of them said it is difficult for them to take care. They put them in a old age home which have just basic facilities. The parents were heartbroken, they had no one to share and no one to support them. Stories like this have become more common in this world. Wherever money, comforts and career takes priority over love, relationship and care. Often it blinds us to even realize that 
We are in this position today because of the love, care and sacrifice that our parents and elders in the family made for us. Therefore, I would like to conclude that it is important that we see caring for the elders as a commandment. We are called to see if our attitudes of care are diplomatical that conveniently justify our inability to take care. It is important as a church and as individuals that we reaffirm our responsibility to care for the elders as God's call to do ministry. Let us together challenge in the values that degrade love, relationship and care and reflect God's love in our lives. May God bless this verse. Amen. Let us all confess our sins before God. O oh, Holy One, we call to you and name you as eternal, ever present and boundless in love. Yet there are times, O oh God, when we fail to recognize you in our daily lives. We confess to you now seeking your forgiveness for all that we have done towards our parents and elders. In order to fulfill our selfish motives, we neglected our parents and elders who taught us to live. But we became greatly God forgive us that we are not sensitive towards the simple desires of elderly around us. Lord, we fail to give enough care and attention which we took from them. We became more sensitive. Elders as God and clearly sent them to old age home. We became stingy, shame tensely tightly around our hearts. Lord, you alone can help us and we seek your mercy to change our attitudes towards our elderly. Help us, forgive us. May the triune God Almighty, who is merciful, looks at every heart. If we are truly repentant, God will have mercy on us and purify our hearts and resources. Let us all join together to sing closing him, Savior like a shepherd leaders.
ఫ్లెటర్ సింటోసిస్ ప్రార్థించుకున్నాం మహోన్నత సర్వశక్తి గల దేవ ఇంక స్తోత్రములు మా తల్లిదండ్రులను బట్టి పెద్దలను బట్టి వారి జీవితమును బట్టి ఈ కృతజ్ఞత స్థుతులు చెల్లించుకుంటున్నాం ప్రభా వారికి కావాల్సిన సమస్త అవసరములు తీరుస్తున్నందుకు వందనములు ప్రభా ఈ చిన్న ప్రార్థనలు వేస్తున్నామని తట్టుకున్నాడు వేడుకున్నాం ప్రభా నన్ను ప్రార్థిక నిన్నకు నన్ను భగవాన్ నీ భూమి దీర్ఘాయ సోడిపాలి నేను ఏగో వ్యాయ దీవం దీని వాడు కనిపించదు పోలే నీకు అప్పని అమ్మి ఇంకా మానికా ఒక నిమిషం నమ్మడి హృదయంలో మనసుని దీవ సన్నిధి ఉయర్తి నమ్మడి మాతాపితకు తాయి నమ్మకు ప్రార్థికా అవ నమ్మకు నలిగే ఎల్లా నిమిషంలో నమ్ము కోరుకా అఖిలాన్నతి సృష్టికత వాయిని ఉండ విధాని ఈ భూమి ఎంగల్కాయ ఒరికియ ఎల్లా నన్నులకు వాయి అనుగ్రహములకు వాయి నిన్ను నన్ను అర్పికేను ఎంగల్కి జన్మం నల్గుందని నియోగించ నిన్న మాతాపితకు తాయి నిన్ను ప్రార్థికేను వేదనలోనే ప్రతిష్ఠలోనే మరి నిన్నే వడంతువా సంతోషిపిక్కువా శరీరాన్ని నేరువై కాణించి వెలువా నల్ల విద్యాభ్యాసం నల్గువా అవరికి నల్గే నల్ల మనసునాయి నిన్ను నన్ను అర్పికేను అవరిని స్నేహికువా కలుగువా పరిపాలికువా ఉన్న మనసుని సాగచిపెత్తి ఎంగల్కి నన్ను నల్గనని అవరిలో వార్తికి కాలతే నన్ను అనుగ్రహికేనని ఆవశ్యమైన నన్మగల అవరే నరకేనని అవరిలో మనసుని ఒరుపెడతాదే పేదరింపికాదే అవగణికాదే ఎప్పుడూ వారి స్నేహికువా నిన్ను సహాయికేనని ఈ సమూహత్తి వార్ధక్యతి వేదనీయాలు ప్రయాస్తాలు వాయిపిన్న ఎలా ఉండదువరే నిన్ను ఈ నిమిషం కోరుతుంది అవరికాగి నిన్ను ప్రార్థికేను ప్రతి ఆశ కైవిడా జీవికి వారు అవరే అన్ని సహాయకేనని ఈ లోకతిని అవసాన శ్వాసం వరి అవరే అన్ని కాదుకోవాలని పూర్ణ ఆరోగ్యతో ఆయుక్యవా అవరే అన్ని సహాయకేనని తమ్ముడు మాతాపితాలు ఉపేక్షికాలి కరుదువాలి స్నేహికివాలి మనసిలాకువాలి పరిపాలించవాల హృదయత్తే ఇన్న దీవతరమునకి అన్ను నల్గనమే అది సిద్ధిగలిగి వీణా నిలుకువా ఆత్మీయ శక్తి అన్నవరకు ప్రదానం చేయనని అవరుడు ఆవశ్యకులే స్వరీకి అనుగ్రహంగా అవరకు నల్గనని ఏషు క్రిస్తున్నాపల్యంలో వీక్షికింబో కవియోడు కీలకు మారాలని
Christ, who bears all of our guilt like our parents, who takes the blame for our wrongdoings, the love of our parent God, who never stops living like our parents do, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, like the protection and security given by our elders, be with us all, no one forever more. Amen.